Hello again, I am Blunty, and that's Devil's Crevice, my gaming PC, and instead of the GTX 970 it was born with, right now it's whizzing along on a Radeon R9 390X, specifically the Sapphire flavor of the 390X. Now, last time I looked at a video card, it was the Radeon R9 Nano, a mighty midget for micro builds. The 390X is almost the exact opposite end of that spectrum. I mean, it's still sizzling along with enough pixel-kicking power power to squirt out 4K gaming and have you ready for virtual reality headsets and DirectX 12 fun times, but at 308mm long you'll be needing more than twice the depth in your case to accommodate it. It also wants twice the number of power cables, asking for both 8-pin power connectors. On the upside though, it is much more affordable than the Nano. I mean, it's still a high-end car deeply seated in the arena of true gaming enthusiasts. But the price versus result equation here is much more pocket friendly than the Fury family. Of course, it's a bit silly to directly compare the 390X to the Nano as they're made for completely different kinds of builds. But hey, a bloke's got to cross promote his other videos, right? <laughs> anyway, inside the 390X's architecture is basically the same as its older family members, the 290X family only refined as far as this chipset architecture will go and clocked up faster still. It's also rocking twice the memory and that memory is clocked at a full gigahertz faster. Out of the box, the R9 390X Sapphire's base clock is 1055 MHz. Its 8GB of GDDR memory gives you loads of breathing room for even the most greedy of games. And of course, it's ready for DX12. Outputs consist of a dual link DVI, HDMI, and three display ports. Sapphire's variant of the 390X, of course, features their Tri X cooler, which boasts chunky 10mm heat pipes and a set of three fans, all of which stop dead for silent running when at idle or at low loads, only even bothering to spin up the fans at all when they're absolutely needed. There's no backplate to pretty things up, unfortunately, but the cooler shroud is more than rigid enough to keep things from sagging. In fact, I was really quite impressed with the rigidity and quality of the build in general. A good cooler, of course, is essential on the 390X, as the Hawaii XT chipsets are well known for getting toasty. And the good news is the Tri-X cooler delivers nicely. It really is silent while you're not asking much of it. That's hardly a shock as I just got done finished telling you about how the fans don't spin at all when they don't need to. But when those fans are required, they're usually pretty well behaved and under most conditions, reasonably quiet. But should it ever need to climb up over 70% fan speed, well, let's just say you're gonna hear about it. And you will want good airflow through your entire case in general to keep this card happy as well. The cooler does do a very nice job of keeping the chipset comfortably within the desired temperature ranges, but there is a lot of heat pouring off that Hawaii XT chip, and it needs to go somewhere, doesn't it? And that somewhere is, well, mostly into the guts of your case. My case does have really nice airflow, actually, but... It is a mini ATX build, and this case is a bit shallower than most, so this particular card comes very, very close to the side panel window, plus its length means pulling the hot air out from underneath it. Well, it isn't super efficient in this setup. So in this build, the 390X under load was enough to noticeably warm the entire system above what is normal for me. By almost 10 degrees on average, actually, meaning I had to ramp up my case fans a bit. It even meant that my CPU's liquid cooler ramped itself up to full speed from time to time while gaming. And it's pretty loud at full speed, let me tell you that. Something that never actually happens either with my usual car, the GTX 970, or the Radeon R9 Nano I recently tested. And that means the 390X managed to warm things up enough inside my case that my CPU climbed all the way up to 80 degrees. That's where I've got the cooler triggering to full speed. 
The extra heat isn't a surprise. I mean, we already knew that this family of cards runs warm. It's hardly a secret. And it's not an insurmountable issue either, as all I'd need to do to accommodate this card in my case would be to enhance the airflow a bit more. Not a huge deal, as I've got the room for more fans. One more at the bottom, and maybe an extra one at the top or the back there, for venting heat a little bit more efficiently. But of course, your mileage may vary in your own cases and builds, but you will need to keep it in mind. But now the question becomes, is dealing with all this warm air worth it? So let's make the card do some actual work. Hitman Absolution Benchmark Ultra It Up and in 4K spits out a damn respectable average of well above 60 frames per second and only dropping down to 54. And Tomb Raider ramped up to 4K with all the pretties turned on and AMD's Tress FX doing its thing with Miss Croft's ponytail easily keeps itself above 60 frames per second, also maxing out at 112. Which, if you're on the ball, you'll notice is exactly the range that will keep you the happiest if you're churning away with a free sync monitor for super crispy, tear and jitter free gaming glory. An extreme run at the Heaven benchmark sings the same tune, averaging 72 FPS and scoring 1822 without breaking a sweat. Over in the valley, asking the 390X to burn away an Extreme HD benchmark still keeps things above the magic number and drops in a score of 2,634. Cinebench results have the 390X climbing just underneath the Nano and just over my 970. Absolutely precisely where you'd expect it to fall, actually. And finally, on the benchmark bench, Firestrike, of course. A standard run kicks up a 10,652 score. Firestrike Extreme kicks 5,391 out the door. And finally, Ultra crosses the line, 2,900. It is, of course, comfortably over the waterline for VR recommended specs, which may very well be your reason for moving to this kind of powerhouse as VR is due to hit the real world as proper retail products pretty soon now. On to the question of coil wine. I'm happy to report that while it is there, it is a lot more subtle than the coil wine I got from the R9 Nano. If you listen for it, you'll find it, but it kicks in later at higher frame rates, and it is a lot quieter and less piercing. In fact, even with my system positioned next to my head as it is, with the side panel on under normal use conditions, I never actually heard the wine. In purely real-world terms, the gaming experience on the Sapphire R9 390X was... Really nice. Performance-wise, it edges out my own GTX 970, although that gap closes when I overclock the 970, and overclocking the 390X had me meeting with no real success. The Hawaii chipset here is already pretty much pushed to its limits. I did try some overclocks, but only ever managed a very modest speed boost of 50 megahertz or so, and nothing that actually made any difference to the gaming experience as far as being able to ramp up any extra settings or see any practical difference in frame rates. I also had some issues with stability while overclocked. Meeting game crashes and even a couple of blue screens of death. So I decided just to keep the 390X in its out-of-box settings. But at the end of the day, the out-of-box experience is more than satisfactory anyway. You want to game in 4K? No worries. And 1080p and 1440p players? Yeah, you'll be turning up all the sliders and settings for the pretties and still scooping up super smooth frame rates. As we talked about, airflow is vital if you want to keep its toasty goodness away from the rest of your system and make sure it can keep its own fans whispering along politely. But if you're flying the Team Red flag and you want an elite gaming experience, but you're not ready to ask your savings account to sacrifice itself on the altar of the Fury family, the Sapphire 390X should keep you quite happy indeed. Personally speaking, I don't think it's elegant, but out of place matte black and what do we even call that, mustard coloured highlights? Look very good in my particular rig. Certainly not as ideal as the black and red sleekness of the Fury cards. But what do you think? Drop a comment if the 390X is on your want list, or if you have a rig you think would suit the Sapphire's aesthetics better. Or maybe someone else's 390X is punching your desire buttons. Speaking of which, go and do the thing with the buttons, would you? You know you want to. Thank you for watching, I am Blunty, and I will catch you next time.